Hello, my name is Dr. Mariah Hahn, and I'm an associate professor here at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in the Department of Biomedical Engineering. My research focuses on tissue regeneration, specifically elements of the musculoskeletal system, the coronary artery, and the vocal fold. I'm here to talk to you today about our research in osteoarthritis and how tissue engineering can potentially be used to treat this disorder. Before I begin talking about osteoarthritis, I would like to introduce you to some of the concepts underlying tissue engineering. These concepts are similar to what you see when you have a cut. For example, in this slide, a person has pricked their finger, the blood is rushing into the pricked site forming a clot or a scaffold. With time, the cells from your body start moving into the clot and producing new tissue or skin. As that tissue is formed, the scaffold or clot degrades, leaving behind new skin. Let's now take a closer look at osteoarthritis in the knee joint. In the beginning stages of osteoarthritis, your joint seems physiologically normal. The cartilage, shown here in pink, will appear healthy and the surrounding synovial membrane will be at its normal thickness. As osteoarthritis progresses into the next phase of the disease, however, you start seeing cracks or fissures forming in the cartilage. In more advanced stages of osteoarthritis, these cracks in the cartilage have progressed to outright cartilage erosion, with whole pieces of cartilage breaking off into the synovial fluid. You also see a substantially thicker synovium. People at this stage of osteoarthritis experience significant pain and substantially decreased mobility. Typically, this is a stage where tissue engineering treatment strategies would come into play. Let's now take a closer look at the dynamics of the advanced stages of osteoarthritis. Again, bits of cartilage have broken off and entered the synovial fluid. And what's important about these bits of cartilage is they're not just passive elements. They're actually communicating with the cells in the synovial membrane and the underlying bone and perpetuating an inflammatory cycle with these cells. For instance, the macrophages and what we call synoviocytes are the primary cells in the synovium. They help maintain the synovium in a healthy state as well as the synovial fluid, which is critical for joint lubrication. In response to the cartilage degradation associated with osteoarthritis, the macrophages and synoviocytes secrete pro-inflammatory factors that are secreted into the synovial fluid. And these pro-inflammatory factors go and talk to the chondrocytes in the still healthy cartilage and tell them to degrade themselves or degrade the surrounding cartilage. And then more bits of cartilage start coming off, talking again to the synovium and initiating an inflammatory cycle. And you can see it just cycles on itself. At more advanced stages of osteoarthritis, non-surgical treatments are generally ineffective. Common surgical methods include osteotomies, OATS procedures, and microfracture procedures. The OATS procedure has many analogous elements with tissue engineering cartilage repair strategies. Focusing then more on the OATS procedure, plugs of cartilage and bone from healthy regions of the joint are harvested and transferred to damaged regions of the cartilage. The idea is that the transferred tissue will graft into place and lead to restored cartilage in that region. Here you see an actual schematic of a transferred tissue plug containing both bone and cartilage that is used in the OATS procedure. Similarly, tissue engineering aims to implant a lab-grown tissue plug into the defect site. However, neither the OATS procedure nor the standard tissue engineering approach treat the clonic inflammation associated with osteoarthritis. In short, the transplanted tissue will eventually become diseased. A potential alternate strategy for tissue engineering, and one that a number of researchers in tissue engineering are now exploring, is trying to not only restore the tissue, but also have that scaffold deliver bioactive factors that can simultaneously interrupt the inflammatory cycle. This strategy can be visualized in this schematic, in which a tissue engineered plug containing new cartilage and bone is loaded with bioactive factors shown here as green and purple particles. Following implantation, the scaffold plug will slowly release these bioactive factors into surrounding synovial fluid and bone. These factors will then communicate with the macrophages and synoviocytes that are in the synovial membrane, as well as with cells in the bone, and ideally take them from a pro-inflammatory phenotype back to a more normal phenotype, slowing the abnormal cartilage degradation associated with osteoarthritis. 
What we hope to see at the end is normal, healthy, functional cartilage and functional bone and a thin, non-inflamed synovial membrane. This is, of course, the ideal and probably won't be achieved in most cases, even if this strategy worked perfectly. The success will depend on the state of progress of the osteoarthritis, but also, perhaps more importantly, it will depend on whether we've targeted the correct sources of the osteoarthritic disease state. The tissue engineering community hopes that in the near future, these strategies and others similar to the strategy will yield important clinical outcomes for improving treatments of osteoarthritis and other diseases. Thank you for taking the time to learn about how tissue engineering can be a critical next step in the treatment of osteoarthritis.